Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to do some more examples of the chain rule. And now you're going to find the chain, chain rule within a product rule or quotient rule. So it becomes very interesting. So let's say that I have um, 3x plus 1 to the 5th times 6x minus 5 to the 4th, right? And I have the product of two functions. So therefore, the product rule is going to apply because I have this times this. So if I want to take the first derivative, I'm going to have to use the product rule. And then if you notice, when I derive these guys within the product rule, it's going to be a chain rule. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. It's going to be, right, the product rule is the first, 3x plus 1 to the fifth, times the derivative of the second, which is a chain rule. I bring the exponent to the front. I keep the base the same. I subtract 1 from the exponent and I multiply by the derivative of the base. First times the derivative of the second, which is a chain rule, plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is a chain rule. Bring the five to the front. Keep the base the same, three x plus one. Subtract one from the exponent, this becomes a four, multiply by the derivative of the base. First, times the derivative of the second, which is a chain rule. Bring the four down, keep the base to the third, times the derivative of the inside, plus the second, times the derivative of the first, which is a chain rule. Bring the five to the front, keep the base, subtract one from the exponent, multiply by the derivative of the inside, and our cleanup basically is a, a GCF. So let's start with just what can we do with each of these terms? Here, I can multiply this 4 and this 6 and get a 24. And I still have this 3x plus 1 to the 5th and this 6x minus 5 to the 3rd. Over here, I can multiply this 5 and this 3 to get a 15 times 6x minus 5 to the 4th times 3x plus 1 to the 4th. So the only thing that I did was multiply these numbers that are outside of these exponents, outside of these parentheses, because all this is being multiplied. So 4 times 6 can be brought to the front, and this 5 times 3 can be brought to the front. The rest stayed the same. Now here's my GCF. Start with your numbers. This is like my first term. This is my second term. What do they have in common? 24 and 15, both divisible by 3. So I could take a 3 out, because 24 and 15 both have um, a factor of 3. Both of these terms have a 3x plus 1, so I'm going to take out a 3x plus 1. Now how many can I take out? This one has 5 and this one has 4, so I can only take out the smallest exponent. I'm going to take out 4. Both of these terms also have a 6x minus 5 in common, so 6x minus 5 is part of my GCF, my greatest common factor. This term has 3 of them, this term has 4 of them, so I'm going to take out 3 of them. So all of this is just my GCF, my greatest common factor. Both of them have a 3 in common. Both of them have a, uh, at least a 3x plus 1 in common to the 4th. And both of them have a 6x minus 5 to the 3rd. What's left? From the 24, I took that 3. So I have like 8 left. Right? I took out 3x plus 1s. I took 4 of them. This had 5 of them to begin with. So I need another one here. I took out 3 6x minus 5s. I had 3 to begin with, so I need no more of those. Plus, what's left here? I took a 3, so to make 15, I need a 5. I took 4 of these, 3x plus 4s out. I don't need any more because I had 4 to start with. And I only took out 3 of these 6x minus 5s, and I had 4 to start with, so I need another one of those. Okay, I took out a GCF. And then I can just now simplify. This stuff in the beginning is going to stay the same, right? Inside here, I can actually continue to um, distribute and simplify. 24x plus 8 plus 30x minus 25. Continue, continue until you can't do any more. I'm just going to copy this part down. I'm not changing this yet. I'm working inside the brackets. 24x and a 30x are like terms. I get 54x. I have a positive 8 and a minus 25. Those are like terms, and I get a negative 17. <coughs> and technically, we could leave it like that. Why prime it? Sometimes we bring this to the front, 
it's again preference because it's all multiplication so the order in which I multiply does not matter depending on your, make that a 17 depending on your professor they may or may not uh, want you to do any more this guy's done okay so this was an example of a product rule consisting of two chain rules so let me do a quotient rule and you'll see some of the similarities um, to what we just did so we'll call this example 2 and let's make up I don't know 2x minus 5 to the third over 8x plus 3 to the fifth okay so here's my function I want to derive and obviously I have a quotient and I'm going to have to use the quotient rule and obviously within the quotient rule I'm going to have to do chain rules because I have these um, expressions of x to the fifth and to the third power so here we go y prime is the bottom okay copy it down the bottom times the derivative of the top and the derivative of the top is a chain rule bring the three to the front keep the base subtract one from the exponent and multiply by the derivative of the base bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top copy it down times the derivative of the bottom which is another chain rule bring that five to the front keep the base the same subtract one from the exponent and multiply by the derivative of the base bottom times the derivative of the top which is a chain rule minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared that was my quotient rule and obviously now I have to clean up so the cleanup for the numerator is pretty much the same as what we just did I'm gonna multiply this three times this two I'm gonna multiply this five and this eight I'm gonna look for a GCF so let me just simplify it first so I have three times two which is six times this eight X plus three to the fifth times this two X minus five to the second minus this 5 times 8 is 40, times this 2x minus 5 to the 3rd, times this 8x plus 3 to the 4th, all over the bottom squared. Now if I take 8x plus 3 to the 5th to the 2nd, the power of a power, I multiply those exponents, don't I? So this becomes an 8x plus 3 to the 10th power. Now, to simplify the top, I'm going to do what I just did and look for a GCF. 6 and 40, both are divisible by 2, so I could take out a 2. Both of these terms have an 8x plus 3 in common, right? This one has 5 of them, this one has 4 of them. I always take out the smallest exponent, take out 4 of them. Both of these terms have a 2x minus 5 in common. This one has 2, this one has 3, so I'm going to take out 2 of them. And let's see what's left. From this first Part. I took a 2 out. To get 6, I need a 3, right? If I distribute this back in, I need to make that 6. I took out 4 of these 8x plus 3s. I had 5 to begin with, so I need another one of these. I took 2 of these 2x minus 5s out. I only had 2 to begin with, so this guy is done. Bring down that minus sign. I took a 2 out. I need to make a 40. 2 times what is 40? 2 times 20. What else is left? I took out four of these 8x plus 3s. I only have four to begin with. And I took out two of these 2x minus 5s, and I had three to begin with. So I need another one of those. Okay? All over 8x plus 3 to the 10. Don't forget to keep doing that part. Okay, so I just took out the GCF on top. Same thing that we did before. If I were to distribute this back through, it would be the same thing that I had to begin with. Now, the only part that's left is this. I could distribute here and combine like terms. So I have this 2 times 8x plus 3 to the fourth times 2x minus 5 squared. I'm just copying that down. And in here, 3 gets distributed. I get a 24x plus 9. Negative 20 gets distributed minus 40x. Negative 20 times negative 5 plus 100. All over again, 8x plus 3 to the tenth. I still have like terms here. I'm just going to write it up here, okay? The 24x 
minus the 40x is going to give me a negative 16x. The positive 9 plus the 100 is 109. So when I rewrite that numerator, I have a 2 times this 8x plus 3 to the 4th times this 2x minus 5 to the 2nd. And in here, this simplifies into negative 16x plus 109 all over 8x plus 3 to the 10. Now, I can continue to simplify. Notice that this is, the, this is the thing. If this was just a product, well, I'd be done. But because it's a numerator and a denominator, I could continue more. Because I created a product of all this stuff up here. Which means that some stuff on top, if it's in common with the bottom, I can cancel. So I have four of these 8x plus 3s on here. And ten of them down here. So I have four in common. I can get rid of four of them. And if I get rid of four of these ten, I have six left, correct? So the top now becomes this 2 times this 2x minus 5 squared with this negative 16x plus 109 all over 6 of these canceled. So I have 8x plus 3 now. I'm sorry, 4 of these canceled, right? 4 of these 10 canceled. So I have 6 of them left. And I can't really do much more with that. Depending on your instructor, maybe they would want you to factor out another negative. But... Here's my first derivative. Okay, so if this was not enough examples, let me know. Comment, let me know um, if, you, if you need more examples of this kind of stuff because it's a lot. But just repeat it, um, go through it, and pause um, on any particular part of this that you need to um, focus on. Okay? And um, I'm going to do a chain rule with trigonometry next, all right? So check that video out.